The law goes on to say this. It shall be lawful for the Governor General by order from time to time to declare any land other than crown lands, meaning private lands, to be a protected forest whenever in his or her opinion this appears to be necessary for the following purposes. One, the protection against storms, winds, rolling stones, floods, and landslides. Two, for the preservation of soil erosion and landslips, or the formation of ravines and torrents, and of the deposit of mud, stones, and sand upon agricultural lands. Three, for the prevention of wasting of resources of timber, and for securing the proper management of lands where trees are growing, and which are not under permanent agricultural cultivation. Four, for the maintenance of water supplies in springs, rivers, canals, and reservoirs. Five, for the protection of roads, bridges, airstrips, and other lines of communications. And six, for the preservation <coughs> of health. Now, it says, in other words, even if you have private lands that are not government lands, the Governor General can declare it to be a protected forest in order to achieve these goals that I just read about. So there is absolutely no legal basis upon which Granitan can be taken and given to anybody. Of course, I say no legal basis, but understanding how this government has operated in the past, we know what they can do. There was no legal basis to give away the assets of the Grenada Postal Corporation until a few weeks ago. What did the government do? It went to the parliament and passed a law saying we have, the law is now changed to allow us to give away the Grenada Postal Corporation and all of its assets and we are also making it illegal to give away the liabilities at the same time. In other words, it is against the law to give away the liabilities so that even if the company says I want to pay the severance of the workers, which is the liability of the company, it is unlawful for the company to agree to pay the severance or to give any such benefit to the workers. That's the law that the government has passed. Yeah? So it is clear that the law, as it presently stands, will simply not entertain any attempts by the government to give or to sell the lands that are now part of the forest reserve. Yes? So, when she says, the minister does, that lands are being put aside for development, they need to tell us which are these lands? Who owns these lands? Are these lands contiguous? Are these lands part of the reserve? Is she going to change the law to now provide that a certain piece of our patrimony is going to be given away as Kamahan Park has been done? And I'll speak about Kamahan Park in a moment. But the idea is this, is she going to change the law? Is it part of the reserve? And if it is part of the reserve, are they going to change the law so as to give away this part as well? And if it is private lands, are these lands contiguous to the reserve? And are these lands protected forests? Should we be doing anything to take away from what we have? As I said earlier, when these laws were passed, there was no uh, international situation involving climate change. Grenada had not signed the Convention on Biodiversity, the International Convention on Biodiversity, of which it is now the signatory. Grenada had not signed the International Convention Combating Deforestation and Degradation of Lands, which it is now a signatory. Grenada had not signed the Paris Accord, the Paris Agreement, the COP21 Agreement, which the Prime Minister went to the United States just a week or two ago to sign on behalf of Grenada. Grenada had not signed the Sustainable Development Goals, which provides as goal number 15 for the protection of the environment and the protection of ecosystems in full detail, which Grenada has signed on. Yet in spite of these agreements, the government seemed quite intent on disregarding the environment as the done with Kamon Park, disregarding our ecosystem, disregarding our bi biodiversity, being prepared to cut down trees and mangroves, being prepared to deforest our lands, to give away our waters, to give away our, our, our trees, to give away everything that we have, including the maritime resources. 
the government seemed prepared on giving away or selling at bush prices um, all that we have left of our heritage. And the question is whether Grenadians are going to sit down and take this. That's really the question. Are Grenadians going to sit down and take this? Of course, what we must be doing at this stage is calling upon Dr. Mitchell as leader of government business, as the leader of the government, not the leader of government business, but as the leader of government to explain to the people what is the true status of the Grand Island Forest Reserve. He owes it to the nation. When he was sworn in an office, the very first speech that he gave at his inauguration at the Trade Center, he promised the nation, he promised the nation that he was going to practice accountability in government and transparency in government. He took an oath to obey and observe the laws and the constitution of the country. And even if his ministers are not prepared to do it, he, as a leader of government business, as the prime minister, as the lead custodian of the countries, of the people's assets, he has a duty and a responsibility for the nation. This is not a time to be running and hide. This is not a time to be playing games. And what we are seeing really is that the nation is being taken for a ride. Every time a minister opens his or her mouth, it's a different story. A different story. So we don't know what to believe. The nation is completely confused and perhaps this is quite deliberate. The Minister for Economic Development was last night on television telling the nation that um, Kamahan Park is now um, that the developer has decided to scale back his project and not to in, so as not to include Kamahan Park in the Rivera project. Yeah? To scale back his project. So if the developer is scaling back his project now so as not to include Kamahan Park, what does that tell you? It tells you that the original project was intended to include Kamahan Park. But they're telling us Kamahan Park was never sold. Kamahan Park was not there. They're having discussions. So it was never on the table. But now the developer is going to scale back the project so as to include, so as to exclude Kamahan Park. Why? And interestingly, they're telling us for the time being, what is the idea behind that? We said it before, and we repeat today, mark our words. The government has no intention of giving up Kamahan Park. The government has no intention of backing off from its plan to give away Kamahan Park. Mark my words. All that they are trying to do is to see if they can win the next election. So they are hoping that they will say, for the time being, we're not doing anything, the developer scaling back. Hold the elections, hope to win, and then come to the nation and give away Kamahan Park. That's the idea. That's the plan. And we must be clear on it. That came true yesterday in uh, Minister Joseph's presentation because the second thing that he said was, we are still continuing. In the meantime, government will continue with the consultations. No. If the developer said, I'm going ahead with my project, I don't need Kamahan Park anymore. What are we continuing with the consultations for? What are we consulting about? In other words, these statements simply do not add up. And as journalists, we want to encourage you. When these kind of senseless, this utter nonsense is spoken to you, you must question it, you must challenge it. Because your children will question it. Your 10-year-old kids are going to question this. It is senseless. And so um, these statements, they must not be allowed. Ministers of government, charged with the responsibility of managing the affairs of our country, must not be allowed to get away with these senseless remarks. Because if you look at it very commonsensical, I'm using that, I'm making up a word here, right? If you look at it simply from the standpoint of common sense, it simply does not make sense. Do not sit and just report this because it makes no sense. Nobody can believe that, right? If you say that the man is going ahead with this project, he's going ahead with this project. Why are you telling me that consultation is still going on? What are you consulting? And who are you consulting with? A news report came out some weeks ago saying that Finsley St. Louis was a member of a committee that was consulting. Finsley St. Louis a few days ago says, I'm not part of any committee and I'm prepared to die for Kamala. So who are you 
consulting with? Who, is, who are the people of this, of this consultation? All of these are important questions that must be asked. Yeah? So colleagues, our concern here for Granitan is real. Our concern for the forest reserve is real. The government is not only doing something that is terribly reckless, but it is also putting the nation at risk. Because one of the things that the government is going to do by, by doing what it does in, in addition, by letting these agreements that I spoke about earlier, the government is also putting the nation in a position where many of the benefits that Winina stands to gain from um, having signed on to international agreements, many of the funds, international funding mechanisms that we need a stance to be able to access because of its signature to these agreements, it will now lose or stands to lose. Uh, I'm thinking here, for example, of the, uh, the Climate Investment Fund. 